Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 14 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we did a complete overhaul of the island of Tabarine, adding the monastery in the heart of the town and feeding canals in and around it. We also began the quest chain for unifying the islands of Enbesa under Emperor Katima. And today we're going to be continuing that story and also continuing to build up our population here in Tabarim. Now you may remember at the end of the last episode we had just breached 1,000 elders that allowed us to put down the monastery. And that's what caused the overhaul. But we actually have one more production chain that we can do to satiate the demands fully of our elders here in Mbessa. Our final production chain, the Lanterns. That requires us to get an apiary together which needs a certain fertility. Then we need a chandler, and then we need a lantern smith. This is stuff we went over in the previous one, but I just thought we'd mention it again. Of course, we have to import glass and import cotton here as well. And we identified the island of Strathrancor, which I kind of still need to rename. We had some suggestions in the comments, but nothing quite stood out to me just yet. Maybe we'll name it something based on farms, possibly. Uh, but anyway, this is our first apiary here. We don't quite have the workforce ready to go to get it started, but... I have construction material here ready to be dropped off, ready to start building ourselves up. And actually, before I get ahead of myself, I just want to say thank you so much as well for I all the kind words master. and the feedback I had in the previous three episodes. I've managed to go through it all now. Pretty much not a negative word said against the series as usual, so I just, I don't know, I just really want to say thank you. It really does mean a lot. I love reading the comments, and it's a big driving force of why I do this uh, series. Obviously, I love the game. It's super successful, at least for me. And everyone seems to be really enjoying it, so it's just great. I really, really love reading everyone's suggestions and feedback, and we've had some suggestions, which was, why don't we add more production buildings into the town itself? And that is something I want to do, and I'll be doing that pretty soon in just a moment. I've got an idea of maybe putting, um, I actually can't remember the name of the building, the Illuminary, is it? The Luminar. Inside the town. It's a really nice looking building. Uh, we'll get to that, getting ahead of myself. So, back to Strath Rancor. As we set up this production chain, um, we'll then hop back over and do some of the quests that are here in Embase that we still have to get through. So, dropped off all of that construction material. We want to bring up the population here just a little bit. So, don't want to get lazy about it. I'm going to try to avoid being lazy and saying, oh, this is for now. Some things are obviously always going to be for now. But, while we're here, I want to make this place look nice and spend the time to actually make it look right. I'm going to cut the road somewhere here. Put those two together. They can look good together. And... It's a bit of a blocky area, but that's okay. There we go. Something like this. Maybe get another house there. That should be all we need, really. But it's just the beginning of making this area look a little bit nicer. And then we can fill this in with ornaments in just a moment. So that should be enough. And it doesn't put too much strain on the economy here. We're feeding in goat's milk to keep these guys happy. Son, and really, finery. And really, we should have plenty. These are the true riches. If we don't, I'll obviously fix that and build something to help us, help us out. Just while we're here, let's um, throw down the fence ornament to create a delineation between the musician's court and these houses. Let's do something like that and a gap there. Wish I could get a line up in the center, but you, you just can't. Um, but that's alright. And then we could just really quickly jump in, grab some of the way camps. They always look really nice out here. Uh, next to the market, maybe the tents, which are more almost like temple-like for the musician's court. They fit really well. And then, seeing as this is a market, maybe some barrels either side. Uh, wrong way around. Let's just turn this around. There we go. Uh, that's probably fine. Leave this kind of open. Cool. Now I'll come back in just a second and dress up the other part even more in a moment. Uh, so, when it comes to the apiary, uh, I, I had mused in the last episode that we couldn't get inside it. And people <laughs> rightfully pointed out in the comments, they were like, well, there's bees inside here, so maybe that's why you don't want to get stung. Uh, which is pretty funny, but it turns out that's actually not true. Although I do think your answer is where probably better than the real answer. The real answer is that the production is paused, and when it's unpaused, you can hop inside of it just fine. And that's the reason uh, we couldn't before. Kind of an interesting little Easter egg or side note that I never knew, actually, is that if the building is paused, you can't go inside of it. I don't know why you would want to go inside of there without protective gear. Uh, well, anyways, so let's just pop down a supply warehouse. And we're just going to copy this building over, and we're just going to build it out, just like we did before. It's, of, it's my belief that I'm only going to need two for quite a while, so I don't need to do a full canal build out on this island until we really start like trying to raise the population a lot, but... 
So it is a bit of a for now, but I think it's going to be here for a while that this is going to be just fine. Uh, Alright, so that's the apiary done. So what we're going to do then is add that to the Ambesan trade route that we have. So we have Katima's Finger that can go load agricultural good of beeswax. And it'll just drop it off the Tabarim. That's the only change that's needed there. So we're taking beeswax from here over to Tabarim. The other thing then is going to be getting the glass and cotton set up. So the glass and cotton is a bit more of a complicated one because we have the route, if you remember, the Ambesan Imports, the 420 ship, right? The uh, World Class Reefer, which where is it right now? It is currently just arriving into the New World. I'm actually just going to pause it for a second while it's right here. So, in the New World, it's about to pick up 300 tobacco. We probably don't need that much. And someone also pointed out really funny that um, because it's called 420, we're picking up like... Smoke leaf, I think they wrote, which is, uh, I don't know, I just found that funny. So yeah, so while we're here, um, Port of Venus actually has a complete overabundance of uh, cotton. And it doesn't really get used in anything. In fact, actually, it must get used in something, considering it's not full, but we've got way too many, too much of it. So either way, we'll pick all that up, drop it off a tabarim. That should keep us going for a very long time. And then when we go to the old world, we're picking up 300 glasses, which again is probably just a bit too much. Uh, instead, in the old world, we'll add Lusk to the list of towns, and we'll get, oops, we'll get it to pick up, uh, what was it? Glass, yeah, raw glass, that's what it was, not glasses, sorry, I got confused for a second, there we go, glass. Lots of glass in, um, that place as well. We actually imported through Docklands, so it'll be interesting to see how we cope with that, and we can always add more if we need to. Uh, and then drop that off, so that is dropping off in multiple journeys. It's going to take a while for it to all get there, but after it gets there once, I've, I'm have i pretty confident that we can still make these journeys and keep the supply up. No problem. I guess we'll find out. Adding all these time delays and having one ship go back and forth between multiple regions is a hard thing to kind of predict, I guess. Alright, so we've added that. I just want to make sure I didn't mess anything up. So, Crown Falls, we pick up clay and wood. Uh, we drop it off a tabarine. Then we go to the New World. We pick up Tobacco, and we pick up cotton, and then we drop it off, back at Tabarim. Then we head back out to the Old World, where we go to Swords, and then to Lusk, to pick up glasses and glass. You could just pick up glasses at Lusk, but the way this kind of, um, supply chains are set up, we just take glasses out of Lusk, like, immediately all the time, so it's just a bit of an awkward one to kind of finagle that way. So this should be okay, and then we go back to Tabarim. So, it's slightly kind of inefficient just hanging around in the old world for long, because this ship is actually kind of slower than a regular cargo ship until it gets out of the session. People pointed out, actually, when I was talking about it and how this ship might not be quote-unquote worth it, because it's faster traveling between sessions, people were saying, well, maybe a good thing to do would be have a small island like this where you drop things off and have the ships just always, like, deliver things on the very edges of the map, you know? Uh, so you could definitely make it way more efficient doing that, and that, that would be a good use of it. Um, I still contest that it's not worth the six influence. I still think it would only be worth... Because if you have two cargo ships, they're both three influence each. This is worth six influence. This does not go twice as fast, even between sessions, as cargo ships. So I still feel like you're better off having two cargo ships. Unless I'm just not thinking of something as obvious. That's my, that's my thinking of that. Now, I'm not a hyper-efficient guy or player of this game. I like to have different ships just for fun. But I am influence constrained, so for that reason, it's it's a tough one for me to kind of um, build a lot of these. But either way, I like having this one, the Ambesan Imports. I think it's kind of a cool ship to have. So this should go up and pick up all that cotton and then bring it back, so that should be good. So now is the time we can start to build up these buildings a bit. So this is the Luminar, and the Luminar I think would be perfect to have inside of the town. So I'm going to move these houses just a little outside of it. Not exactly sure where I'm gonna... Oh yeah, actually, I do have an idea of where we'll put them. Yeah, somewhere like that. Because that gives us a road out that way. I think that looks kind of cool. Let's grab the Luminar. So the Luminar actually looks really, really nice. It's almost like a school of, of, of sorts. Do we have a description about it, actually, I wonder? It just... No, I guess not. I thought you get um, descriptions about buildings. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, either way, you can see them all kind of like working in there. So basically, this is turning indigo and paper into illum uh, illuminated scripts, which I suppose is them just writing knowledge and research and stuff down. 
Um, so I think it's kind of cool. It's like a it's like a library, right? It's basically a library. You can see all the books inside there. All the scholars kind of working on working away on it. Or elders. So to, to have it around the elders itself, I think it looks quite nice. The only thing I was thinking is like it's a bit weird having it across from the musicians' court. It might be a bit loud. <laughs> all the all the banging of drums and dancing about, but. I don't know, I still think it looks quite nice. I did think about putting it like up here or something, but I still, I just couldn't find a place that I thought it really fit better than having it here. Um, kind of hard to describe it without just showing you where it looks other ways, but I don't want to bore you with moving things around too much. Um, but essentially, I think it looks good there, so I'm going to leave it there. I like to think just inside that, you know, the sound is muted. They don't really hear things in there, possibly, even though it is just like an open door. Uh, but hey, if you've got ideas of maybe what you think I could, where you think I could move it, maybe might consider it, but I do think it looks nice in the town uh, where we've got it, and facing this way is good too. Um, so this side, basically what I want to put down here is probably just, this is a building that has to receive goods, obviously. So I think having some barrels and things makes a bit of sense. Just something like that, an area where they kind of drop off their goods. I know they're dropping it there, but you get the idea. Um, actually, something that's one that I wanted to do was put a warehouse around the corner here feed in a road this way, and that way I can have some other production buildings maybe out here in future as well. Uh, let's see, what could we go with? Maybe a fence? Sort of fence. Oh, I can't put anything down there, that's a shame. But a fence there is pretty much just fine. And maybe we can have a little cut here. Now, if I do have buildings out, I guess I'll just make a, a little cut in the road right here, probably, as well. Uh, but yeah, so basically that luminer should now be pulling from here, I think. It's definitely a shorter distance after it makes its next trip. Anyway, I think it looks good. I think it makes the city feel more alive. It's definitely not efficient or anything, but nothing in this playthrough is. <laughs> uh, right, so we've got that up and running. So let's go back to our elders. Let's get the lanterns chain up and running. I feel like I could redo this area a little bit as well. Tapestry looms. Let's just move this over here for a second. And start to put down mud brick roads and everything. So let's see, how big is that? Okay. And this? And this is every 30 seconds, every 30 seconds, and then every minute. So you could have two lantern smiths for one of these. Hmm, that works well. Oh yeah, so these buildings feed into this. Okay, so let's put this one here. Perfect. Love it. Alright, great. There we go. So we have two lantern smiths right here. Uh, I'm gonna face them the same way. Just because this is like the, the main road, I guess, for them. This is almost like the back in the livestock here. Uh, we have our two supply warehouses. Okay, we have that. So the only other one, and then this. Only the Lord can create from nothing. This should almost open up, like, have its open entrance out this way, right? Because it feeds into these buildings. You want to make it look kind of cool. So I moved this one, the pipe maker. This one is kind of just... This one is just kind of on its own, so I don't mind just having it somewhere out here, I think. Yeah, we'll just feed a road. This road continues all the way? Yeah, it does, actually. It's nice. Uh, maybe I'll face it the other way, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's better. And then we can connect it to this warehouse. Nice. All right, good. So we've got a bit of a gap here. Maybe we can just fill this in with some ornaments unless un until we get more buildings or something that we want to make it look even better. But if we add steel plate, I'm pretty happy with that. Just that regular sand patch blends pretty nicely. It's a slight difference, but barely. Barely. Alright, good. And then we can just clean all this up. And have a nice... Pretty unified production area. We have the um, elders population to handle all of this as well, job-wise. So this is all good. Alright. Alright. 
And that other blueprinted building on my right is a town hall, I believe. Oh, sh crap. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, that's fine. Alright, cool. There we go. So is that area fully done? Almost. We should just fill in these last bits, bits of ornaments out here. So just trees where there's little indents in the farm there. And then just some patches of grass. Could look quite nice. Not too much though. And then maybe we'll feed this road up and around. Some barrels to make it look kind of more natural. Trying to think what would work next to this building. What have we got? A Watt kitchen. Ah, a little campfire outside of it makes sense to me. Some barrels as well. Maybe some trees. Uh, maybe get rid of this one actually and just make it look a bit more uniform. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, you know what? We could even make it look a little bit more uniform and just. Oh, did I put the wrong thing down? I did. Sorry, my bad. There we go. And then this is a bit more of a wild area. With some shrubs and bushes and things. Yeah. Alright, there we go. If we just have a little zoom out, we get rid of this. We can see our production area right now. I think it looks good. I mean, as far as production areas go, it's pretty, um, it's pretty nice looking and relatively efficient to be wrapped around with a farm on the fertile soil. I think it's good. We've got these nice, big, thick warehouses uh, making the place look pretty cool. And then our farms on the bottom. So we've got room for more buildings as well and even another town hall. Or, sorry, not a town hall, a uh, trade union. Affects dry houses, Sanga farms. Chance of fire reduced. We actually don't really have, um... Yeah, we actually don't have a fire station up here at all. Hmm, I dare say that fits a little too well. Just do that. I put something in there eventually, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know, it depends what we need. Because obviously we want to make use of all this space if we're going to use the canals and stuff. Actually, how much canal water do we have available? So another 300 on that side. And that's the paper mill, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the paper mill, so no water out there. That could be another production area out there if we wanted it to be. But this could all be filled in with canals. This could be filled in with canals if we wanted to. Uh, or we could do this as a paper mill. And turn that into a water canal and actually irrigate that soil if you wanted to. And instead just kind of keep this area for another production area. And yeah, you know, we're flexible. We could do a lot of different things. Uh, but either way, that should be us sorted now to get everything together. They've actually already started to get lanterns. Surely we haven't made the delivery yet, have we? No, glass is going to run out. We're in the presence of a so that hasn't arrived yet. Um, and what about the cotton? Cotton hasn't arrived yet either. So let's just open up the trade trade route and see where our ship is that's doing that. So it's full of cotton and tobacco right now. Oh, it's actually just entered into the region right now. So there we go. So that's going to be used for the uh, candles. So that sorts that out. And then it's going to have to go on its next journey back to the old world to pick up glasses and to pick up glass. And then we can get kind of kickstarted that way. So what I'm going to do just to speed everything up, basically, is here in the old world, just pick up some glass. And we're just going to make a manual delivery to Mbessa just to kickstart that production chain. It's as easy as that. That was pretty, that was nice and fast. We should do another World's Fair, actually, while we're here. Oh, we have the thing. Nice. High-end equipment. I'm going to go with machines again. So, we have a helical planer. Planner? 
planer. Affect sewing machine factories, cannery, bicycle factory, and a lantern smith. Hey. Speaking of lanterns. Um. What about this? Clay pits, salt pepper, sand mine, limestone, and oil wells. And a hunting cabin. So this is workforce reduced, productivity increased, productivity increased. I don't really need it. Um. So we'll just run another event. Oh, sorry. Forgot I had to confirm it. I know you're probably thinking, like, load it on the ship while you're going, but nah, I don't know if I'll bring it to the, to there or not anyway. Let's just do another one of these, a large science exhibition. We need plantains, we have plenty of them. Felt, loads of it. Beer, surprisingly not that much, considering I guess we use Docklands to bring some in, and then canned food. Ah, it should be fine, it should be grand. It'll be grand. Uh, we could turn on a brewery, just for a little while. Yeah, do that. Just turn on a brewery. Actually, you know what? Turn on all the breweries. There we go. And let them burn through all the resources we have to make as much beer to offset that as possible. Okay, so... Let's see, where are we at? So there we go. The ship is just about to deliver its cotton. I can teach you how to do this. And then we can start doing some of our quests again. Boom. So that's delivered. And with that delivery, this building should get its request. The cart is going over to the warehouse. Oh, wow. They carry it by hand. I didn't realize that. Anyway, so that should, in turn, create the ornate candles. That's then going to be used with glass to make the lanterns. And then our population should climb and stay. stay. Oh, it's already climbed. So we're actually maxed out right now. It's going to start falling down, though, soon. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. So how much did we go up to when it climbed? 1180. So we could definitely have more houses here. I want to add some here and then obviously fill in this patch down here. Looks good. All right, so back to our quests. Let's have a look at what we're doing. So we have the two quests for either we can send stuff to Archibald or we can send stuff to Emperor Katima to almost gear them up for war as a bit of a standoff. And most people in the comments seem to be leaning towards Katima and saying that they're happy that they see me leaning his way, because Archibald comes across as a, as a bit of a dick, basically, out here. Uh, but I'm going to leave it. That's kind of like what I think the finale should almost be to these questions. We want to unify Ambessa first before we start doing that stuff, I think, anyway. Um, so we have the Research Institute to build that. So the life of a research assistant. So this is the Caduce and Atoni quest lines. Let's just go to, uh, I don't know, 6 a.m. It's bright enough. So, Caduce Anatoni. So, here we were before, we're after talking with the scholar. Uh, the scholar was kind of introducing us to this place. We know that there's a big library here. We solved the riddle, and um, let's have a look at what we need to do next. With access to the library of Caduce Anatoni secured, the scholar suggests seeking out all available research material concerning the founding of Embesa, sometimes referred to as the Golden Age. There should be books and tomes enough in the library if only you can find them. So the idea behind this is that we want to learn more about this place and kind of um, talk to the elders here and get them to kind of capitulate and become part of Mbessa. They're actually an independent island right now and basically the palace wants to exert control over them, which I think is kind of an interesting story just because Emperor Katima wants to exert control over several islands under his domain and, you know, the, uh, the queen... And Archibald want to exert control over him. So he's like saying, no, 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 we're independent. And they're saying the same thing. So it's quite an interesting mechanic, I think, or a story. Um, he's a bit of a hypocrite in a way, in a way. All right. Well, anyways, so our next thing is to read books describing this golden age and the founding of Mbesa. So let's go. So click to read the Ogdode of Virtues. From its voyage. All right. Eight senses, touch, sight, taste, smell, hearing, wisdom, emotion, and instinct. If something expresses itself through each of them, then it must be divine, as nothing can access human senses better than divinity. Senses are our way of feeling and understanding the divine, and as such, training each of them is a virtue. Training but one is for naught. Next up we have Ontroglodite architecture. The tradition reflects the times. Oh. Uh, all pretty good. Architectural exhibition ends. I thought it was a science exhibition we did. Maybe that was one even before it. Uh, let's read this again. 
The tradition of carving homes into the very rock of the mountain seems to have originated in Sael Amidos. But the people of Inbesa gave up on this architecture as soon as they settled in the Promised Land, for mountains were scarce. However, following the depredations of the Sun King Surya on Caduce, the burning of the library and all it contained, and many of the priests' homes, Caduce and Antoni resumed the practice of rock dwelling, building their temple within the living rock of the island. Uh, so that it would be indestructible. This happened right after Surya's reign, under the Age of Princes. Okay. And the tradition of- so the a tradition of living inside the rocks here, carving in temples and homes into the rocks, was in Sile Amidos. Now, Sile Amidos is actually- we got one of the items in our museum, I believe. That was part of Sile Amidos, something like that, I think. That's our zoo. Don't know if I ever made the delivery. Yeah, there it is. Treasures of Silamido. So when we first found Embesa, we got that item. Attractiveness 50. The many and overflowing treasures of a realm. Believed... Uh, a realm none believed to exist. Clearly, they were not hardy enough adventurers. Because we found it. Alright, cool. Now, I just want to drop that glass off. It's in the wrong place, actually. Just go to here. People said to rename. Oh, I've spelled that wrong, and I'm after forgetting how I'm supposed to spell it again. Sorry, I'll I'll look it up. You don't need to come, and I'll hope to get it right in the next one. Let's just rotate those two ships around. The Hikosin can stay here for now. We'll drop that glass off. There we go. So anyway, with that glass, I believe these guys have what they need now to kickstart the lantern production and keep that population high. Okay, so back to um, Caduce. So that was the Salamidos, and then we have that, uh, what was it, God King Surya. This stuff is actually kind of important, it comes up later. Some King Surya on the island, okay, so it happened right after his reign, the Age of the Princes, when the library was burned. Alright, next one, Treaties on Heresy in the Golden Age. Heresy is what is that which the powerful would not see survive in their dominion. dominion. In the Golden Age, Surya burnt down the whole of Mbesa, his very country in rage of madness. He branded Caduce outlaws and heretics and tortured anyone who would not renounce the true faith, and many died. But the true meaning of heresy is any lie to the soul, and any physical representation of divinity can only be a lie, as divinity transcends what the servants can see, thus idolatry is heresy. Okay. Oh right, okay. So creating idols of gods, anything that's physical, is a lie, because divinity transcends that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next we have <clears throat> Litany of the Blessed Dead. Litany of the Blessed Dead, Leban's Year, 52, Gopha, Death by Meerkats, Adira, Death by Boulder Fall on the Mountain Path, Lulu, Death by Falling Off the Mountain Path, Tila Hun, Death by Severe Sword and Injuries, Noteworthy Belongings, Old Spear, Entrusted to the Ogdode, and uh, post Leban, year 24, Abia, death by drowning in a keg of sweet wine. Note to self, check integrity of cellar ladders. <laughs> okay. Next up we have a day in the life of a priest. The priests of Caduce follow strict rules and rituals on every God-given day. Duties are morning ablutions, noon ablutions. Oh, sorry, and evening ablutions. Sorry, ablutions. Uh, rituals, all ablutions to be performed in the holy pool. Time between ablutions can be spent in the village. Labor and crafting are prohibited. Only the followers of the true faith of Mbesa may live within the community. Only ordained priests can wear the traditional tattoo of Caduce on their face and wrist. New recruits shall show their naked wrists to prove their identity. So were the rules laid out after the dark rule of Surya, whose flames devoured all books in Caduce, cursed be his name. And then the last one to read is the foundation of Mbesa. And as they rode the waves seeking the promised land, the queen bid the gods calm the raging storm. And so did the gods comply. And the waves rose higher than mountains on either side of the ship, yet the waters before us were becalmed and clear. And ahead lay the golden plain of Mbesa. So did the queen lead her people through the sea, where leviathans roam and build a mighty city there. And in that city she raised a temple to her lost husband, Selamawi. And those who had stayed with him in Salamidos, beyond the confines of the world. I hope there'd be more, but these are all the books we have. Hardly enough for a full chapter. Scholar is disappointed. 
Isabella Scholo of the Golden Age. There is much we could discuss. I'm just gonna um turn up her voice real quickly. Might be a little too loud, we'll see. So what's next? She wants us to, to discuss this golden age with her. Despite the abundant learning stored in Caduceus' li uh, library, there are precious few tomes even mentioning this so-called golden age. After some fruitless research, the high priestess notices your frustration and inquires as to its reason. Her face lights with a rare smile. Only when she a fool loosens that grip. When she learns of the object of your research and invites you to come and find her in a more temperate place to discuss, it, to discuss the matter. All right, let's do it. The Golden Age ended in cruelty and bloodshed of Surya. That much is well known, but its foundations are unclear. Few sources have survived the ravages of time, even in this place of learning. There are barely even any mentions of the early years of Mbesa outside of the book you found. What did you glean from it? Mbesa's first day could be the day that Queen Shaba landed on his shores, or legends and fables of Queen Shaba's journey. This one, right? Myth or history? Did the scribe who carved these careful lines know of the sources... Uh, know of sources lost to us today, or were they lending too much credence to popular belief and legend? We shall never know. Such is the peril of our learning. Your ship our, has returned from its voyage. Our conclusions are transient themselves, as whatever as are whatever choices we make. We must lend caution to our thoughts. Accounts are precious but fallible. Only evidence, traces from the very time you wish to study, might yield information on the gold on the fabled golden age, and the cradling times in Embesa. Of Mbesa. But what but where would you look for such traces? So we could look at the Emperor's City was built on the ruins, perhaps in the ruins of the old library on this very island, or there are ancient structures on Wahadesha, perhaps there. Well, I would assume on the in the ruins of the old library, perhaps, See, when it was burned down. For both of us. Precisely. There are things and lands here that have lain untouched for millennia. While war and faithlessness laid waste to the outer worlds of Tabarim and Wahadesha, our prosperity and the renown of our scholars and faith have done much to let Caduceus survive unchanged. Nowhere other than Caduceus and Atoni will you find land untouched by greedy or violent hands for countless centuries. If evidence of Surya's time is to be found, it will be in this ground on which we stand, where the Mad King's Inquisitors burned the old library two millennia ago. History becomes legend. Legend, myth. And even myth is half forgotten. But why not dig up the old library? There must be traces to be found. Why is it doing that? There we go. Quite right. Archaeology is the queen of all disciplines. Go, dig, dust, douse. The evidence should be enough to complete this first fragmentary chapter. So, what do we need to do? Recruit a group of you workers on another island. Gather a crew and supplies, and we will support you. So, uh, looks like we can do it on any island we want. Uh, we could do it over here at Wadasha, recruit people there. We could Beware the sweet words of the priests of Kidusi. They are cannier than they seem, and would see their faith vindicated rather than bow. Hmm. We can even do it at um, Tabarim and Emperor Katima's Island. Let's see if we, we'll go here first. I'm just going to avoid Fire the other out. ships. There's so many quests now. We'll just get straight to the lighthouse and see what we get there. Alright, cool. So, how's our um, situation? Good. Let's have a look at the consumption rates of lanterns. Two to one. Awesome. So we could definitely improve that. We can improve... So we could definitely get more elders. Goat's milk might be a little tight, but... Uh, we can make more, no problem. Clay pipes is a little tight as well. So is things like hibiscus tea. Okay. Well, goat's milk is easy enough. Oh yeah, we could add teff grass and uh, increase the production without actually doing anything else that way. That'd be a good idea, I think. Let's do that. Oh. Um... I'd hoped you'd see things from our side. Hmm. An interesting idea. But the capital will not grow if I expend workforce on secondary concerns. Hmm. Unsurprising. The people of Tabarin are wayward, having forgotten the ways of old. I 
I'll just catch you up on that in a second. That's a shame that I'm going to be leaving a gap there. I really liked being able to fit that piece of um, land in there. I guess if I wanted to just make it make it look a little nicer, we could just do this. Yeah, there we go. I could have also just done it here, thinking about it. Oh, I'm after messing these up big time, actually. I just realized what's happened. All right, anyway, um, just really quickly, what was mentioned there, I think, is that we sailed over to Katima's lighthouse, and he said he's not going to give any help. Uh, oh, the crying. So, I don't know, we could sail to... I guess we could sail to Wahadesha, recruit island, recruit them over here. I don't know which the one's the target. Has stood mysterious for millennia. It said lighthouse, Arriva so I guess go here and go there. There's, there's so many quests. You could end, I could end up taking on something else and starting a whole other chain. I don't, don't really want to do that. I want to do them one at a time, uh, rather than confuse you guys with like reading events left, right, and center. Anyways, uh, this is just to increase go. These colorful. Yeah, increase our. Um, Oh my god, our output of goat milk. Couldn't think of what it was there for a second. But moving this thing down here has actually disrupted stuff. So I'm just going to move it back. I preferred where it was anyway. Because I forgot. This can go in there. That can go there. Wait, can I not go there? Oh yeah, here. There we go. So that's done. There is tea by the goat. Alright, so that's all back to normal. So we have a bit of a gap here. What brings you? Right, so we're over at Wahadesha. Resources oh, yeah, are thin. In. Any help you could send would be appreciated. So they want ten dried meat. Okay. We cannot accommodate so many. We shall need temporary quarters for these workers. And then she wants thirty-four wands of timber and ten mud bricks. So we can deliver both. Thirty-four. Why is it so specific? <laughs> Okay. They've had their fun. Let's have ours. They're in Ghibling. Yeah, this is Caduceus and Antonio. All right, we'll read this. So, while preparations are being made to begin the excavation for the Golden Age artifacts on Caduceus and Antonio, you've turned to Wahadesha to supply workers for the project. The chieftain was eager to help, but requires you compensate the island for the missing workers with resources from your own city. He has little preference as to what food is supplied, as long as it's native to Mbessa. This would certainly help us survive. Yes. If an oath given is an oath due. All right, we have the workers. Our workers have boarded your ship. On the airship. May your search <laughs> prove fruitful. All right, we'll send that airship over. Transport the workers to the excavation site. No problems. Just move the ship away for now. Anyways, uh, so I'm thinking of just getting another goat pen here. Actually, this one I was de uh, deliberating in my head. We just copy another one somewhere here. So yeah. Now for the final note. We're ready to deliver the material? Yes, we are. Back already? Just trying to think, is there a better way to do this? No, not really. I think it does have to move over. Uh, have we found enough workers for the excavation? We have indeed dropped them a off as well. Contribution to the, Lord's plans. the excavators appear ill fed. That will have to do for the task at hand. Last, the excavation can commence. Lord, look favorably upon us. All right, let's just cut that there. Let's move this in. All right, that can go here. This can go there. And there we go. So that's both. They both have bright harvest right there. Why can't we build that? What do we need? More mud bricks. All right, so sorry, I got a little bit bogged down there. But essentially, what's going? What what we've got is you know modules on either side. Now these are both just goat farms, but I'm adding silos, and these silos will basically allow us to. Um, I think it'll look even nicer if we just push the silos back a little bit. See, maybe a tree. Yeah, that's nice. 
competitors have agreed a peace deal. Cool. All right, so that's going to put some strain on Tefgrass. Uh, so we might have to build out another Tefgrass farm soon and help supply those different things. So we've actually got a timer on this one. Oh, the excavation is now started, right? So the workers are here from Wahadasha. Wait until the workers discover something in the ruins. So 13 minutes to go. Down, down into the deep. In order to provide a precise history of the history uh, of the Golden Age, the High Priestess of Caduce Anatoni encouraged you to uncover the ruins that lay below the library. With plenty of workers and a camp installed in Wahadasha, it's only a matter of time before you find the best, your first artifacts. The competitors have agreed a peace deal. So Katima wants us to, yeah, obviously start the quests for the other two islands. Don't want to do that just yet. And that's pretty much it. So we're just focusing on Caduce and Tony for now. Just trying to think what else can we get doing in the background. Well, I guess we could just build up that farm, like I was saying. Uh, we also need more households here. So let's begin that as well. So I think... Let's see, how many workers do we need for this? Teff farm. Oh, you know what? That'd be awesome if we could bring them some... Oh, do, is there a... Oh, yeah, you can feed in... You have to feed in oil and everything. I totally forgot about that. Um, hmm. I guess it'd be no harm delivering a big batch of steel and everything that's needed to go along with having lots of that stuff, right? Like steam motors and stuff. Steel, reinforced concrete, and windows. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so let's get the Great Eastern. This can go back to Lusk, where we can pick all of that stuff up and get preparing that. But in the meantime, we could just build another farm anyway. But yeah, I think I will try to feed in. That's a really interesting and complicated thing, I think, to try and then feed in uh, a railway. I've never done that, I don't think. A railway and try to avoid the canals and also like hit the certain buildings that you need to do. So we might have it somewhere out here coming in the opposite direction. Right. Uh, a worker requires your help from the excavation site. All right, okay. Select the melancholy worker to see how you can assist him. Here he is. It is lonely work, excavation, and I miss my home. But a picture of the Kesar of Wahadesha would help greatly. Take a picture of the Kesar. Okay. There we go. Thank you kindly. Wait until the workers discover something in the ruins. Alright, cool. Back to back to square one. On course. Alright, let's get this Tefgrass uh, farm going. So let's see where the best place to cut this will be. Just trying to think, we obviously want to be feeding in another canal here eventually. One, two, three, four, doom. There. And the question is, yeah, do we want to go all the way down this, this way or not? Hmm, I don't know. We'll just build what we can for now until we start running out of space and then I'll be like, oh, now we need to move stuff over here. Um. All right, and maybe we get another one. And that's not, none of that is on fertile soil, which is good, or irrigated soil. Nice. And then this can just do the same. Right, so therein lies the problem, right? We need to go further with the canal. Like, we could just feed this one in out this way though. leaving space here for extra buildings if you want to add them in as well. Because 
yeah, now we could basically get another one of these in there if we wanted to. Just have loads of tough grass for the future. Alright, something like that doesn't look the best there, I guess. Um, we could maybe try to clean that up. Should we do that now? Is it worth trying to clean up? I guess so. Make it look a little bit more organized. So that was all just part of this one anyway. I think you have to cut away maybe two more actually. And I should add up. Ah. Need one extra tile. God damn. Is that dry grass? Yes it is. Uh. I'll probably just have to add in the one then, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Or we could just do it the other way, go up that way. Yeah. Looks a little cleaner anyway, just slightly. Alright. So this needs two more here. All right, there we go. Looks a little bit better, slightly. Um, but yeah, we don't have any of the enough workers for all of that. Like, I might just pause two of these anyway. We don't need all of this. Not time, buddy. It's just for the future. We'll probably need it eventually. Uh, all right, so let's get some extra houses down. So this is, I wanted houses to go all the way up to the edge here and have a road cut through. pretty good. Alright, give it a mud road. And that should be enough new dawn. without putting too new. much strain on things, I think. So heavy on the tap grass. What's this? This is hibiscus. Is this hibiscus as well? Lots of hibiscus, but I think we still actually even need more. Now we have trade unions that can boost these guys, so I might look for items that can actually boost hibiscus. Goat farm, Sangha farm, affects animal farms, etc. Yeah, let's, let's send a ship around to Katima, see if we can get anything. That'll give us what we need. And then back in the old world, we have the World's Fair done, right? So let's see what we got. I feel a certain. Again, let's just go with machines. Actually, high-end equipment. Okay, let's try high-end equipment. Okay, so we got a double iron grill work. Affects all production buildings for an increased attractiveness, but a reduced chance of fire. We have a two-man saw. Affects lumberjack hunts for 35% increase of productivity. And then a reverberatory furnace, which we have already. Not the best, to be honest. Let's try one more time. Well, we'll probably just keep doing it, actually. But yeah. Canned food is very low. Cotton is fine. Rum is fine. Chocolate's fine. With canned food being so low, let's see if we can just do a quick trade for something. So canned food, anything we've got just too much of. Too much wheat. There we go, get rid of all that. Um, so, I had mentioned before in a previous episode... Oh yeah, these guys are out. We've run out of cabins! I'd mentioned before in a previous episode that this place is just subject Your to so many overhauls. From its and point. once we get to 10,000 investors, I don't think I'll have to... I think then I'll be able to do the time lapse that I'm planning, where I redevelop the city maybe for the last time. Obviously, we're going to be getting scholars, 
I'll be very interested. I will be reading the feedback of this episode the day it comes out. Very interested to see. Someone um, posted and said, why don't you put the scholars up here and have the artisans down somewhere out here by vineyards and by the other artisan buildings that you'll get with the scholars later, such as leather boots and things like that. Um, I don't necessarily know if I want to put them next to the industry itself. Depends how those buildings look. From what I remember, they still look like factories, a lot of them. So maybe, but probably not. I love this area up here, but I can see how scholars up there surrounded by the research institute in the middle of it might look kind of good too. You know, I'd like to see what that looks like as, a, as an idea. Um, it means though that these, you know, time is moving forward. It's an era of progress, and if we want to do, if we eventually want to set up crown farms, potentially, there's no real need to have these farms out here. We don't need a lot of it anymore. We have beer production just as an import now. So I can see where, where the person is coming from, right? So it's like, it's just a maybe. It's just a hypothetical, just throwing it out there. Scholars up on the hill, artisans somewhere down here, and then like, uh, I guess just the big city where the investors are, and then like more big area all the way out here along the river when we get rid of the farms for engineers. Um, so yeah, I don't know. And then linking these two up finally. I know I've been putting that off for so long. Uh, I, I do think I'm going to have a sort of a Central Park-esque type thing going on here. The reason I've been kind of waiting with it is because I want to eventually move the clay pit here. That's the annoying thing. Once I move the clay pit, then we can join it up perfectly. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just basically on, on a drawing board of ideas all the time and thinking about well, where, where can things go and fit everything in. And then a palace as well. I have a really good idea for a palace. Or I think so anyway. But um... It's also dependent on where things where things sit in the end. So I'll have to see. I'll have to see. But I'm, I'm eager to hear what you guys think. My, yeah, I won't give away what my general idea is, first of all. Let's hear what other people think first, and then see, see if we come up with anything better. Um, Alright, let's jump back to Embesa. How much time do we have left on the quest? A minute 20 to go. Alright, sweet. How is everyone here? Everyone's Blessed fine. Is the land where sheep and lion run free in Good. Everything is overproduced here, as far as I can see. And what about Tef grass? Yep, so Tef is now just slightly overproduced. For the amount of demand we put on it, we've just got it pretty much lined up nicely. And we have extra workforce now, so we could turn one of these on. Who's a good girl? Daddy? It is good to feel useful. But I think that's what I'll do. I'll get that ship together with all of that construction material. So we need lots of steel. Oops, lots of steel for all of the um, railway. Need some windows and this and this and this. I think that should be enough. All right, HMS Terror is on its way. Activate the engines. Alright, let's see if uh, Katima has anything that we can buy to help our workforce. We have much to share, I think. A pygmy hedgehog. <laughs> um, so, all in best in residences. I'll just get you anyway, why not? I think I have these guys already. I can never remember. Affects the lantern smith. Productivity replaces input. Instead of ornate candles, the building uses Labor light bulbs. Strike a hard surface. People told me to use that, but of lost history at last. I think it's better to just use the actual beeswax and stuff. I find it harder to produce light bulbs than it, because otherwise you need engineers. But at least it will still taste of something. Musicians' courts range of the monastery and, and the musicians' courts increased. Yeah, let's get that actually, because we can put that in the town hall. Set. Do we have anything in this town hall? Oh, we do. Oh, yeah, we have those two guys I just bought. The industrious embroidered dress. Happiness and reduced needs. Uh, I won't be using it then. I won't be using that other thing. Waiting this course. is all redundant stuff then, basically. Okay, so the next part is done. Be getting any more. Archaeology. Select the artifacts to excavate them. The ancient and elaborately inscribed headstone is still partially decipherable. It is an inventory of ships and of trade to and from the island, evidently thousands of years old. Wow. An ancient pillar. An ancient pillar, seemingly holding the library before Soria burnt it down. 
The vase is adorned with the image of a solar king, what radiating solar flames over the rest of Mbesa. Perhaps... More than anticipated. Didn't it read the last bit. remain exposed while the search continues. Kept safe from the flames in a sealed vase, the ancient tapestry is still quite beautiful despite its fading colors. It portrays the invasion of Caduce and the theft of strange plants. Perhaps the legendary Deathless Graces. Damn it, I didn't get to read it fast enough. There we go. Sought, sought, so, by de sought so desperately by King Surya. And the last thing, observe the carved headstone, Ancient Harbor Registry. An ancient registry of ships and their inventory from the harbor of Caduce, arrival on departure of ships and goods. One fragment at the very bottom of the headstone seems comparatively in a much better state of conservation, as though it is far younger than the rest. We Quote, as Caduce Anatoni does. Quote, as Caduce, Caduce Anatoni does not produce goods, according to ancient precepts. Our predecessors Unquote. in the Golden Age saw that Caduce Anatoni's purpose was not to produce goods. Wisdom. Proof of the historicity of Caduceus' creed and practices. The excavation can resume, but do inspect. Damn, sorry, I didn't read the rest of it. <laughs> it may inspire you to write your chronicles. Excavation continues for another fifteen minutes. Can we click it again? Yes, there we go. Proof of the historicity of Caduceus' creed and practices, much to the high priestess's delight. I suspected there was more to this project than they let on. I sense underhanded ambitions to support their independence. Hmm. Okay. So, prove that the findings were fraudulent. So we did see that a part of that headstone that read that they want to be independent and not produce goods seemed younger than the rest of it. Hmm. The question is, do we want to call them out on the lie or not? Could you see, so, Katima says the strange case of the errant monolith. Prove that the findings were fraudulent. Someone may help you in Kadusu. We've only got 15 minutes, though. Optional. Investigate the headstone before they reach the bottom. On the walls of the old library's roof, long destroyed, extensive carvings portray the early history of Mbesa. Queen Shaba's dominion of Mbesa, the peaceful meeting of Kashtan and Mbesa officials that led to Wadesha being traded. So, I think it was just asking me to do that, right? Look at the headstone. One fragment at the very bottom seems comparatively in a much younger state. All right. So prove they were fraudulent. Someone... A milestone in the world of finance. Someone may help you on Caduce. Who could help me? All right, let's have a look around. Nope, they're not interested. Are you clickable? Tombs. Please let me be. I'm busy studying, says the scholar. Learning blindness is a gift, the high priest has said, so I could learn to listen better, but I'm not entirely accustomed to it yet. God, am I slow at reading, or does it just go by really fast? That felt fast to me. There are so many rocks in the way. I know I forgot my cane at the temple. Oh, dear lord. I should be praying at the fountain, but I left my walking stick at the temple. Oh, dear lord. Silence has a lease here, except for the invisible distant echo of droplets against the cliffs. Ancient temple. Hmm. Mausoleum of Surya. Someone may help you in Caduce. Well, you think it'd be someone near the place if they would know that it's fraudulent. Can't click anyone in here. No? Competitors have reached a trade agreement. The library. I wonder if the library say anything about it, right? Although it says someone. I don't think it's going to be clicking the library. There's a temple and a statue here. An ancient statue abandoned by derelict that bears an uncanny resemblance to the statues on Wahadesha. Perhaps it's from a similar time. Or even similar makers. Alright, let's go further down the coast then. I don't know. How much time do we have left? 
11 minutes. Okay, we got plenty of time. Ephraim the Artist. The tattoo is only granted once a priest has proven magistry of the Ogdod. Okay, nope. Many have tested our strength before. We still stand. God damn it, I have no idea. No idea. Ah, House of Priestess Layla, the skillful one. A sign reads Home of Layla, the skillful one. Keep out. Keep out of the terrace as well. The terrace. Hmm. Workers at the excavation site have last, uh, last uncovered the upper levels of the old library to much excitement among the priests. It seems that among the artifacts found, there was some contained evidence of their claims of being wardens of the base's original ancestral faith. Emperor Katima is, however, extremely suspicious of such a serendipitously beneficial find and asks that you investigate this event. I trust you will see it done. Hmm. A compound of Naden, native a and Besson island is under siege. The scholar didn't want to know. Okay, nothing there. Nothing here, except dogs. If we come up here and we select these guys, nothing there for us. This guy... I wasn't there when they pulled it out. I was staring longingly at the picture you gave me. Oh, yeah. I wanted a look. But they told me a priestess was examining it. When I returned from my break, the stone was back in the earth. Ah, well there you go. The worker noted that the stone had, clear, uh, had clearly previously been taken out of the ground. Someone, possibly a priest, seems to have altered it. There must be some clues at the site of the headstone. Bag of carving tools. There we go. Well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? A bag of tools used to carve stone marked as the property of Layla, the priestess overseeing the excavation. The bag of tools belongs to Princess Le or Priestess that. Layla. Priests live on the eastern side of the island. We just uh, found her house a second ago. A sign reads home of Layla is skillful one. Keep out, keep out of the terrace as well. Ah, right. Specifically the terrace on top of the house. Right, sorry. Upon the table sits a letter addressed to Layla. Layla, lies and truth are not absolute. They are defined by the context with, uh, within which they are uttered. Only the gods can utter truth. We are bound to imperfect assessments individual at best. Altering the stone is one such assessment. Some will call it fabrication. But it is, it, is it not our duty to ensure the will of the gods is on earth as it is above? This provides a greater narrative, a truth in keeping with what we have defended and upheld for voyage. millennia. We will gain much and so uphold the greater truth of the gods by transforming the lesser imperfect truth of the mundane men. Copy the original text, then throw it in the well. Perhaps one day that truth will be every bit as needed as its destruction is today, when we have all long returned to dust. But that time is not now. Be discreet. Be skillful. Oh, we're going to check the well. She's after throwing the original letter down there. There are fragments of ceramic in the well, ancient and worn. One of them is inscribed a manifesto of ships and cargo similar to the headstone found in the excavation, I knew but strikingly it. lacking Must the last freshly carved Wahadesha sentence. Wahadesha folk would not notice, but we are wise in the old law. You have to confront them. Confront the high priestess. I'm going to do it. Oh, they've stopped. The workers are focused on the high priestess's revelations. So you found my note to Layla. I did not expect you to be so astute, but I cannot deny there is some relief in not having to hide it anymore. I suppose you want to know why I did such a thing. The deceit is for your own selfish profit, or I believe you wish to protect your faith, whatever the cost. That did seem like it was the case. Our faith and our duty are intertwined. To document history beyond the reach of mortal men, whether kings, tyrants, or passing ephemerals. Katima's dream of an empire does not accommodate this truth. So if deceit is the only way to remain beyond his grasp, to remain true to our divine mission, there are no illegitimate ways to preserve the, this island and its soul. However noble your intent, what you did is a fabrication, it is a lie. I'm gonna say that. A lie? Though we may have no proof of the veracity of our creed's tenets, 
You have no better evidence of them being untrue. I, have to, I, ha I may have falsified evidence, but that in no way invalidates our fundamental truth. Perhaps such understanding is beyond one of such foreign ideas. Let us not idle further. Condemn or condone us. I have no power over you. I can only trust you will do what is right. Oh, tough one. I think we should tell Katima. Yeah, we gotta tell Katima. So you condemn us to fade and die. How disappointingly predictable. I expected nothing more from one of Katema's hounds. This affair is no longer yours to command. Take the proof to Katima. Hmm. I didn't think we'd actually end up destroying them doing this. On our way. All right, let's send over our ships and grab what we can. You must now take proof of your dishonesty back to Katima, so then you may plan the next step. I'm hoping... I don't know. I don't know what happens. I genuinely can't remember. I'm just... I don't want them to... to fade and die. Now I thought that... I don't know. <laughs> Deliver the Ostraka to Katima. Okay. Ostraka to Katima. Is it to this ship specifically? It seems like it. I don't think it's the right thing to do to lie, even if your intentions are good. That's my opinion. So he must know. I take it things did not go as expected. I had expected better than common forgery from priests. Evidently, wishes... it is time they were brought back into the fold and learned humility. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. I want them in the fold. Everyone united together. Discuss Caduce and Atene with Katima. Make a decision. I confess, I had not expected the High Priestess to stoop so low. However, we, however much we may disagree, she has always had my begrudging respect. But such deceit is intolerable. What did she say in her defense? She would rather commit perjury than see Caduce's library destroyed. Their library? What it is but ho walls hollowed by time and the dust of desiccated spirits and bodies. Why would they cling to such an extent to, uh, to, such an extent to the piles the of their past shot. glory? Fear of modernity and change, perhaps, or a deep-rooted love and belief in their traditions and history. Caduce is a place of wonders and enchantment, however dust went. There are secrets hidden in its spiraled stairs that are worth a thousand angels' words. But even so, is this legacy enough to cause such... Uh, enough cause to... enough to let such deceit go unpunished? Is this what they will teach to those who come to them for advice? Tell me, trusted advisor, what would you have me do? They've challenged your authority once. They will doubtless do it again. Unity comes with tolerance and acceptance of others' failures and mistakes. I would, yeah, go with that one. Be lenient on them. Bring them in. So they have moved even you to mercy. I see wisdom in your words. It takes greater courage to forgive someone's mistakes than to punish them for them. If this is what the priests taught you, then there may yet be wisdom to be found there. Let this mercy be the start of the new Embesa. I wish to build. I will not cast them out, nor break off trade if they make penance and join with Embesa. Deliver this decree to Kidusi Anitoni, and let this tale come to a close. I would punish the priests for their lies, Heading set. but people look to them for guidance. Very well. Let them be united with the Empire. Do we get to read it? For their sake. This misguidedness does not renew itself. A decree proclaiming Caduce and Antonio's union with the Empire, provided they acknowledge Shall the Empire's faith. I think our uh, wheat is probably leveled up. An Imperial decree? I had expected the Emperor would wish to hear no more of us. I... Caduce cannot survive without trade. It would be a death sentence. We have no choice. We must bow to the Emperor in submission. I wonder if they had been right, whether it would have changed anything. Hmm. It matters not. Our unity, our future, is now close at hand. You have done well. 
brushing away the cobwebs on Kidusi. I have made arrangements, even a new monastery, so oh. that the priests of Kidusi can join the rest of us under one faith. Well, that sounds good, as long as it's the same faith that they have, right? <laughs> At last, our magnum opus is complete. I have had several copies made. Masterful craftsmanship, if I do say so myself. Okay. So there it is. A fine... oh, These sorry. chronicles <laughs> herald a new golden Waking age. Course. The age of lions. The triumph of Mbesa. And we, the architects of its splendor. Nice. It's not actually part of any set, though. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a shame. But the Chronicles of Mbesa is a cool item to have. The splendors of Mbesa. We could take that to Cape Trelawney. Drop it off. Why the hell not? That's where we have our um, main museum. Oh, the crane. Well, there we go. We brought one island into the fold. Our next goal is going to be to get Wahadesha into the fold. And unify everyone. Even Angareb, the pirates. Um, it's pretty fun because, like, I actually, you know, I don't know the the way to get to the outcome, I guess. Oh, look, by the way, we're starting to earn research points. Oh, that's awesome. We'll start talking about that. Well, that means we're ready to start building scholars, right? Or, well, let's find out. Back here. I'm running very long on this episode, but I wanted to get at least that story done. Uh, scholars, housing. Finish the rise of Emperor Katima. So that's not done yet, and we need 1,500 elders in total. So we can't do that yet. Uh, but cool, we're starting to earn research points. I'll talk about that in the next episode. It's not really relevant to us until we get to a research institute anyway. But we're just going to passively earn uh, research points in elder households now if we've the supplied them with manuscripts. From the and Itoni Monastery. Yeah, see, there you go. He's loving it. She's loving it. All right, great. That was awesome. I really, really enjoy the story in this. I think it's really interesting. It's uh, more dynamic than it seems. Because um, that you, it can go wrong. You know, the outcomes are different depending on what happens. No, what do we run I out of? Can't simply out of glass? Make do. So that was the 50 glass we arrived with originally. I wonder, is there... Oh, right. We've already dropped off glass and we still don't have enough? Hmm. I'll have to keep an eye on that trade route. Something seems amiss. Um, I'm sure we have some for a while. But I wonder, is the amount that I'm allowed to take away from here just too high? Oh, 743. Well, maybe we need more than just 150 then. Friends of mine should strive to be exceptional. I guess there's two buildings that use it. So that could be why. It gladdens me to be reminded of your positivity. <laughs> Our ship is on its way down. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. It's a really long running one. I hope people liked the story. I know some people said, can you read through it faster? Other people were saying, please take your time with it. So ultimately, I'm just going to take my time with it. And, you know, obviously people can skip ahead if they feel like they, they know it already. But this is story heavy. It's going to be story heavy. But in the next episode, we're going to go for Wahadesha. And I'll try to actually plan out maybe a bit more about where I want to build. Um... And how we want to do out more canals and raise the population to that 1500. So hopefully next episode a little bit more focus on building while we do Wadesha as well. And uh, I'll try to sort out that that issue that's happening there where we're running out of stuff. I think that it's just because we have two of them. We still have a peace deal. plenty on the island. Uh, 27 is a little low, actually. Yeah, I'll have to think about it. All right. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll be reading the comments right after this episode as well. And apologies for a late upload on Sunday. If you're watching it as it came out, my power, or not my power, my internet went down. for quite, It's been up and down all day, basically. So it's causing issues. All right. Well, thanks. like, ugh, like I said, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.